Now, Rock Talk with Mitch LaFon. We are speaking with uh, Crocus uh, Frontman, the one and only Mark Storacci, as we say in Montreal. Uh, bonjour, monsieur. Comment allez-vous? Bonjour. Très bien. Uh, et toi aussi? Oui. Oui, ça va très bien. <laughs> so, uh, this is what I wanted to tell you. First of all, I've been listening to the new album, Live and Let Live, and it is fantastic. It's a great rock record. But before we get into all of that, <laughs> just before the interview, uh, Bobby Blotzer, drummer for Rat, called me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I said, I said, I'm going to talk to Mark Storacci. I got to go. I can't talk to you right now. And he uh, says, he says, please, please say uh, hello for me. He is one of the greatest singers. And he said, when I used to be over in Switzerland with Vic Vargas, yeah. uh, Mark was around and he's just, so he wants to say hello. He wants to say how much he loves you. Thank you. And, Thank uh, you. Yeah. And uh, he, he just wanted to, so just quickly talk to me about those days back with Vic Vargas and... and yeah, Vic, uh, Vic Berger. Vic Berger. Berger. 1980 <laughs> with Tom <laughs> Cruchet and, and Bobby... Were you part of the band? What, what was... Or do well, you just... No, 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 no. This, this was the Vic Berger solo band. And right. uh, they got together with uh, Blotzer on drums, obviously. Yeah, and they went off and did a tour in the USA, and after that, <clears throat> it was uh, I mean Crocus was on the road in the USA a lot then, and then um, we uh, split up Crocus. That was eighty eight, and uh, then I got together with Vic Versha, and uh, we did Blue. Which right. it was supposed to be my solo album, my first solo album, but then we got into this kind of thing. Well, I wrote as much, uh, I I contributed to the album as much as you did, so um, we can't really call it your solo album. Okay, okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. He said, but you know, you can call it what you want. So I said, okay, I'm feeling blue, so I'll call it blue. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's a great, it's a great album. I still love it till today. The production, I would change, obviously, um, oh, tweak yeah. it up a bit. But it's, it's nice, great songs, nice, nice songs. I would, if I'm going to live that long, maybe I'll cover a couple of them. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to play, going to play one of them. Uh, you can't stop the rainfall. I'll be playing that live with my Storace. Band. band. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. And Bobby, Bobby Blotzer, it's so nice to hear from you through Mitch. And uh, I appreciate and uh, yeah. it's all in the heart and in the mind and in the soul. And yeah. well, if you don't mind, I'll connect you two after. I'll I'll uh, I'll send you an email and I'll connect you two. Why not? I, I last time I met uh, Bobby was in the rainbow. We were sitting in there in the 80s. And he was in Rat, and I was in Crocus, and we were both rocking. <laughs> so, so, such great memories. And uh, uh, last thing he, he said, he said, if Mark has a way to contact Vic, please let me know, because I, ha I lost my way to contact him, and I just want to say hello. So if you have an email okay. or something, we'll talk about that after. But there okay. you go now. You said that uh, you want to be rocking into uh, into your 80s. You even said that in the promo clip for the album. Yeah. Um, Crocus, of course, was doing the farewell tour before the pandemic. You're not retiring then. You're going to keep going for as long as you can stand and sing. Yeah, as, as long as I, I can do it and it's fun and it's no strain on my whatever part of the body. <laughs> yeah. Um, then as long as it's fun i, I want to carry on doing it and um, you know it's been fun we we worked during the pandemic and it was nice working in the studio again and uh, i've got a nice bunch of musicians whom i really uh, am fond of and um, we have a good working thing going and uh, we're rehearsing for the live gigs right now and we'll see what happens, you know, take it step by step. That's always the best way. 
And as long as it's fun, why why should you stop something? You know, if it's uh, fun. I agree. I mean, uh, and all you have to do is you look at Mick Jagger and you just go, listen, I got no yeah, excuses. If he can keep going, I can keep going, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah well, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so talk to me about this album because this is the first official Storace solo album. Yeah. Um, what took so long to get to a solo album? Was it just always listen? I've got Crocus. I've got this. I've got Blue. I've... Yeah. T talk to me yeah, about making one. Yeah, basically, it's always something in the way, right? Or else there's nothing in the way, but you want to have some time off from the other stuff you've been doing. And now it's been like we just finished the whole uh, farewell tour of, of Europe. We did some great festivals in 2019 yep. with Crocus. And that was fun. And, and it was sad. Uh, the last day we played the Hallenstadion sold out here in Zurich, Switzerland. And it was really a happy, uh, sour, sweet and sour uh, occasion, you know, and um, yeah, so that was over, and then we, um, not in the usual formation, we did the Monsters of Rock Cruise, you know, that yep. two gig thing, which you spend five days on the boat, you know, with uh, thousands of rock fans, and it's fun, it's really fun to do. Yep. And after that, we were hit by well i did this is rock this is i do a lot of side side things this is rock is uh, a production by my manager who is the ex t drummer Rolly yeah. eggley uh t was my first uh, band big project yeah band uh, progressive rock so then came COVID. And I said, well, what the hell are we going to do? Um, and people, I saw that people started streaming stuff. It was the beginning of the big streaming wave. And I told my daughter, Juliana, hey, let's do some karaoke. We'll search for some music on the internet and sing to it. We'll do duets. And uh, she's got this nice, sweet voice, you know, really... Mm. And uh, <clears throat> so we did a bunch of those. And thanks to those, we got on, invited on TV for uh, live stream streaming yeah. shows. And uh, I was asked by another TV channel to do one here at, at home and send them the whole thing, you know, with presentation and stuff. So got to do everything ourselves. It was fun. And, uh, and then... That was kind of, we reached a point where I, I told her, now you're getting too much uh, um, um, publicity and you have nothing to follow, follow up, you know. Right. So it's, I guess we'll close the curtain on that now and we try and find some good songs for you in the background. I wrote the first one for her, but, you know, I'm not a songwriter in that sense where I come up with a song every day. You know, it's like uh, five a year, uh, it's like maximum. <laughs> if <laughs> when, when it's coming from me alone, I mean, you know, right. guitar and vocals. So anyway, um, she's still looking for songs. And in the meantime, I open my drawer just here, this one, and uh, it's full of lyrics, which I, you know, write whilst doing things and just throw them in there since years and and i also have an archive on my computer with songs which i've been writing with different people since 20 years and out came live and let live with i wrote i wrote with uh, charlie price 20 years ago oh, wow. and and uh, also paradise which is also on the album is uh price storace uh, song and and the ball started rolling and I in the meantime I had made contact with this guy in Newcastle in England his name is uh, Adrian Fisher and he plays in a in a progressive band uh, um, yeah and uh, it's called 
Stuckfish. <laughs> Stuckfish. So, yeah, so, My favorite band, Stuckfish. Stuckfish. <laughs> Stuckfish. <laughs> in in uh, in Newcastle, and he he had he sent me these great ideas, you know, and uh, so three of the songs on the album were written with Adrian, and uh, and we wrote over the internet, you know. I mean, just for demos. And uh, then there's another whole big story <clears throat> in the background where I was invited to do this TV show called Sing Mine Song, which is like you sing other people's songs. Right, like and the voice in a sense. Six six musicians, six singers singing each other's songs. Gotcha. And we, we talk, uh, it's like a talk show as well. And each different night is somebody's night. You know, when I, when I had my night, I I sang Hellraiser first and ended up with, uh, uh, you know, I can't even remember. But this 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 show was a big hit because it was released during lockdown when people were sitting in the sitting rooms, you know, <laughs> begging uh, for entertainment. They're like, please yeah, give really. me something. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so, so these two guys who uh, produced it are a drummer and a rhythm guitar player, and they also have this studio, Power Play Studios in right. Ma Mauer near Zurich. And uh, so Massimo Buonanno is a producer, drummer, and Cyril Kamensind, producer, rhythm guitarist. At the end of the show on the last day, he said, so what are you going to do? When are you going to do a solo album? Crocus is closing shop, you know. So I said, yeah, you know, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, I'll come visit you guys, you know. So I visited them through internet then because of lockdown. And and we, we got the ball rolling and they went into a, a room and started writing ideas and they sent me a whole bunch, you know. So in the end, I had about 30 songs. And it was like, the, in German, you say, Qual der Wahl, which means the pain of the choice. You know, when right. you have too much, the choice is... Too much of a good thing, as we say in English. <laughs> yeah. So in the end, we chose, you know, together with Rolly, who is my manager, and, and Cyril and Massimo, uh, we we chose the right songs, and I think they're the right songs, and and we've got songs on reserve for whatever will happen in the future, and um, I'm happy with the whole the way the whole thing turned out. You know, yeah, so am I. I thought it was great. I, I want to ask you one thing. There's a song on there called "Broken Wings," and yeah. the lyric uh, mm -hmm. is similar <laughs> to the lyric of the Broken Wing songs by Mr. Mister, but musically it's not. Yeah. Is it a cover or you just took some, some lyrical ideas or it's not a cover? No, no, uh, it's not a cover at all. Yeah, okay. Because uh, it, it does say, only, take these broken wings and learn to fly again. You do you do say that. And I was like, yeah, it, okay, but it's not uh, a cover. Okay. Exactly, exactly. Okay. I, well, I took that and, and when I uh, approached, because this was one of the songs uh, the music was written by uh, Cyril and Massi, Massimo, and they said, you really want to sing, take these broken wings and fly again? I said, yeah, what the hell, you know, um, people sing, I don't know, this, that and the other. And it's, yeah, I love you this and I love you that. I mean, you know, people, listen, people steal things all the time. And I'm I'm really honest about this. I really I really want to sing this because I like that phrase, I, yeah. and and the song has absolutely nothing to do with Mister Mister. Well, that's it. I was completely confused because which I heard the I lyric. <laughs> uh, sorry, I said I said that's why I was confused. I heard the lyric, but yeah. then I, I listened to the music and I went, well, it has nothing to do with it, but it's the lyric. Yeah. So okay, okay. So now you've answered. <laughs> It, you, it's just it's just a borrowed lyric idea, but musically a different yeah. song. Okay, all right, I got gotcha. you. And what re what really makes it different then is the next line. You know, take this broken heart, right, and and learn to love again. You know, so it really puts it 
in a different picture immediately when you gotcha. hear, the, hear the second line and the music, you know. Well, the music is completely different. I loved it. As soon as I heard that rip, I said, I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so... Let me ask you this. You you did have your start, you know, obviously like 40 years ago or 50 years ago, and you were doing a bit more progressive. When you get to doing the solo album, did you want to experiment with different sounds and, and, and go yeah. progressive? Or did you want to stay true to what Crocus does and just call it Storace? Like, no, you know. no, no, no. So for no, a no, fan I... that hasn't heard it, how do you uh, do? I mean, I've heard it, so I can't, you know, I don't want to ruin it for people, but... How would yeah. you say to a fan who goes, man, I love Crocus. Do I buy this? Don't I buy this? What am I getting? So just tell them, what are they getting? Yeah. Well, Crocus does uh, boogie-based music right. and other right. stuff. I mean, right. the Crocus spe musical spectrum is much wider than ACDC, the band that they get compared to all the time yes and that you were uh, auditioned you know, for or were asked to join or something like that there's yeah i was i was asked if i would like to but i said no because i'm happy in crocus and and that was it you know yeah. um but then it was dramatized by everyone who yeah you know did the interviews with me which is okay you know but anyway what i wanted to say yeah, the music, we decided, I mean, we talked with, with Massey and Cyril. We said, I said, okay, but there, we don't have really any material and stuff. And what I said, what what direction do you want to go with this? He said, well, let's, they said, let's get together and jam, you know. And I said, uh, one thing I like is, you know, the old, very old Led Zeppelin stuff, you know. And um, and they're into the rival songs, you know, so that's right. like very modern, very old school in one right. thing. And um, <clears throat> I would call it heavy melodic hard rock. Okay. Because it, it is heavy at times. I yes. Mean, Lady of the Night is tuned down one whole note, you know, so it's like, <laughs> yeah. Sounds it sounds mean and dangerous and I, I said yeah it should sound a little bit like have to have the, the the bit of a dark feel to it like black sabbath music you know and so there's these two extremes on one side you have lady of the night tuned down the whole note and then you have paradise which is the closing track which is like oh the sun is coming out and We've got the surf, surfboards out and and the fire is burning on the beach and we're having fun and we're in love and we're with our girlfriends, partying, dancing, whatever, smoking reefers, whatever. Right. And uh, so there's there's the two sides, you know. I'm a Libra. I'm, I'm like yin yang, two sides. Oh, geez, you're a Libra. Oh, I'm a Virgo. <laughs> Oh my God! I know what these. Oh, no. oh, oh Le my, Libra! My wife's a my wife's a Virgo. We my my mom's a Libra. So I un I fully oh. understand the problem going on here. Okay, she. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I fully get it. Hey, by the way, since you talk about the media over dramatizing stuff, I have interviewed you before, and I have never asked you the question because uh, I think it's such a stupid question. Yeah, here it comes. <laughs> And I think it's such a stupid question because it's 40 years ago, but people always go, you didn't ask him about D. Snyder. So, no, oh, because D. it's 40 Snyder. years ago, for Christ's oh, sakes. <laughs> like, why would you want to ask somebody about something that was 40 years ago? But okay, I'm going to uh, ask you because now I don't want to get fans emailing me now. Um, <laughs> what, what what happened with D 40 years ago? That Was it over-dramatized? Is it just a crock of shit? Is it... Was there a big problem? Oh, I mean, dramatizing is 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 like uh, <laughs> is is like a small way to describe it. <laughs> right, it was a big time drama. It was like uh, let's make a scene out of this and get a lot of attention, <laughs> kind of thing. Let's bang on the floor and on the table and let's yeah. never forgive those guys because they are so nasty. They, <laughs> 
you know. It's, right, it's silly. Uh, it's, know, it's silly to I'm, even I'm talk the about. Only guy, I'm the only guy putting up any defense uh, about this this whole thing, whereas it was a whole band thing with our tour manager. We were on the road. And, right. You know how it is. You got schedules and everything. Mm -hmm. You wanted uh, new stage clothes before the next tour. I can't remember which tour that was. I think Headhunter. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, we ended up having great, great stuff for, for the Headhunter tour. Or, yeah, it was Headhunter because Chris Von Rohr was still in the band. So, yeah. and um, so D. Snyder's uh, wife, with all respect, you know, maybe she tried her best and everything and, and did these clothes and we tried them on and laughed at each other, you know, so it was like a spinal tap situation. And our tour manager said, I'm not going to pay, you know, take them back. You know? And they were made to measure, so she didn't want them back. What am I going to do with them? And, you know, and something I heard later on, like decades later, is, is that uh, somebody threw them into a bin and burned them, you know, which um, I don't... I don't know if, if that's, if that's true. true. No, but um, obviously, you know, it's it's Dee's wife, and and uh, probably she, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And he's defending her, which and is fair. He's defending her, being the chivalrous guy, you know. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And on guard, and, you know, let's fight to the death, and I'll yeah. kill you all for that, you know. But for me, that's that's no way to go about it. And and live and let live. The song, a title song of the album, opens up that that way. And it's not about D. Snyder. I wrote it with Saddam Hussein in mind. You know, right. people like him. You know, it's like uh, the whole world is changing. A new age is dawning. Right. Forgiveness uniting where yep. darkness prevailed. You yep. know, it's like, hey. All right, come down, and we don't need to kill each other for this. This isn't the Wild West, you know. It's like let's step out of the salon and see who's the fast gun, you know. Yep. Those days are gone. We have to change for the future if we want want to have a better world, you know. Yep. This is part. This is one more thing next to the pollution and and everything else that exists, you know. Uh, well. So there's so much, such a long list, unfortunately. <laughs> I just got to say, I, I hated asking that question because it's, to me, it's such a silly uh, topic. <laughs> no, no, but, it's okay. But I keep getting emails, you didn't ask him about D, and it's like, well, oh, come on. I can live with, with that and answering it. I'm yeah. giving you my honest answer the way I know it. And, and I hope, you know, you know, I can open a, up another chapter about this because uh, I, I, I was uh, on tour with Rock Meets Classic. It's a mm -hmm. German production and uh, people like, you know, Ian, Ian Gillen and, and oh. That's, yeah, let's get a poster going. Yeah. Uh, hold on. I say, can you see that? I can. It says rock classic. Uh, oh, Rick Parfit of the Status Quo, and yeah, uh, Eric yeah. Martin of Mr. Big. Oh, that. and John uh, oh, John Wetton. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's gorgeous. It, and, yeah, they, and it it was so nice. You know, everybody was so nice, and and then I was invited uh, to go on again, and, and we did nineteen. 19 dates we did. Uh, no, actually, it was after this one. There was. Another gig coming in Wacken, you know. So I thought, wow, oh, Wacken, I like that. <laughs> and but then D. Snyder was the headliner, headline singer, singer, and he told the guys, he said, "I'm not gonna step on that stage if Storacci is still in in the in the thing in the, in, show. In the production." Right. Yeah, so, so kick him out or I won't come. No singer of Crocus on the, on my show, you know, so on the headline. So anyway, and my in, my intention had been to meet up with D and go have a beer with him and talk it out, talk it out. If he wanted me to sign a check 
for the stage clothes and give it to his wife, I would have done that. You know what I mean? Because it's beyond money, you know. Right. Another song on my album, it's called Love Over Money. Right. You know, and it's all about the speculation going on with these contractors ruining, destroying old buildings and stuff and, and building these boxes, apartments that look horrendous, you know, yeah. instead of the, this art, which we used to have back in the day, you know. So love over money, yeah. you know, that's my mentality. I, I got to say, uh, I live in a place where you are not allowed to build two, two buildings that look alike. Uh-huh. So okay. I, I live in a residential area where every house has to be unique. It has uh -huh. to have character. So it's cool. very old school. And I'm glad that we still have that because the mm -hmm. town over, it's just crates. Like It's like milk crates. They all look they all look the same. And it's it's terrible. Yeah. It's like Lego. And it's just like, ugh. Yeah, it's just but money love makers. Lego. Money yeah. makers, you know. Yeah. You, don't um, see the, you don't look at your your apartment from the from the outside. You, you're living in it and you look from the inside outside <laughs> inside looking out <laughs> um but before i go on with the album here i want to ask you just one more thing you, you of course you did mention that you started off doing progressive bands where did you decide i want to go do rock i want to go do metal was it just because you know at the end of the 70s and 80s with the sabbath and with uh you know, Aussie going solo and all, and, and the new wave of British heavy metal, that there was an excitement and you said, okay, I'm going to hop over. Or was it just luck or just the next band you joined was doing rock? Like, how did you move away from being like Genesis and became Black Sabbath in a sense? Well, I was uh, doing Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath before I joined T right. and and we started doing the stuff which was inspired by much more than just Genesis and and yes, you know there was also uh, other influences in there. But, <clears throat> but but this was a a time period where I as a, I can go back to when I was still living on the island in Malta and I I reached a point of saturation where I thought I have to decide now at my age what I want to do in the future. Right. I'm either going to stay here and end up singing in nightclubs and hotels and and uh, doing uh, covers for right. tourists. Right, you're going to be you cabaret know, for the next 40 years. For, yeah, and, and I can save money in the bank and stuff, but but maybe that that's going to kill me, you know. Um, or I'm gonna, t I'm still young. Um, you know, I've got the power and energy. I'll go out there and try and do it the way I dream about. You know, being in a band, going on tour, writing your own songs, and and stuff like that. So <clears throat> this was uh, at the end of '69, uh, I guess, mm -hmm. and. 70 i went to london and tried my best and met this swiss girl and she told me she knew a, a swiss manager who had this band in saint gallen and i ended up in saint gallen and from there um i went to t because you know the first band didn't work out right. and uh, with t i really formed my roots you know and my professionalism the the, the professionalism i wanted to to reach, right. you know, through through being in T, because we started writing our our own songs. Uh, the guitar player Armand Falker, uh, he he was technically um, gifted, um, capable, right. yeah. And later, actually, he made a big career as a producer in Munich, but that was after T. And he did he recorded our demos, multi tracks. You know, I mean, the Beatles recorded Sergeant Peppers on the four track, you know. <laughs> so so we were doing our uh, whatever, 16 tracks. And, I know. And, oh, no, big time, I mean, the big time, 16 tracks. 
<laughs> uh, poor Mutt Lang would be laughing at both of us right now. <laughs> oh. but, but anyway, this was this was great. Uh, a good good time, good learning time. And we were pioneers of the Swiss uh, rock scene. Okay. We were doing progressive rock, you know, so and pretty heavy stuff, uh, a lot of it. And we toured as well uh, all over Europe and Great Britain. And um, we lasted seven, eight years, you know, uh -huh. which was quite, uh, quite a round. Quite an accomplishment. And, yeah, yeah. So that that was a T phase, and and uh, so as as I as I said, because your question was how did you go from uh, from Genesis yes to to to, to Sabbath, and so so it, like, you sort of came full circle then. Yeah, yeah, because after that progressive uh, thing was waning out. Um, I went back to London <clears throat> right. and um, I formed a band called Easy Money. And we were kind of in, there was the new wave thing coming, not the new wave of heavy metal yet, just no. new wave. Right. And, uh, you know, there's one song I'm going to play live as well, because what I'm going to do live is a bit of my entire history. career. Right. You know, yeah, kind of. <clears throat> so that's going to be fun and there's a song called telephone man which is pretty heavy and aggressive <laughs> drumming and stuff like that you see and i'm from it, the 80s telephone man is is new edition it's like hey mr telephone man you know that video from the 80s that 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 five those five five black kids that were singing hey mr that's, <laughs> that's what comes to my mind when i hear that um <laughs> So, so do you do you like all the different music, or do you prefer progressive to rock, or do you prefer rock to progressive, or a good song's a good song? Like a, a good song's a good song. Okay. I even have a blues song on on uh, the on album. The, on the album, it's like a, a wide stretch, and and it's 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 just I I love it, you know, and I can imagine I'm I'm gonna enjoy it first in smaller clubs and until it ripens up as a live song that we can play it in stadiums when we get there you know when when the whole scene opens up again like right now it's not looking rosy at all because of covid figures rising again oh i know it, it's not ending and now we've got the omicron and it's just like oh my god <laughs> Yeah, but, but so, hey, yeah. who knows? Now, uh, mm -hmm. it is the first official live record, "Live and Let Live." Yeah. Is it the last one, or is it the first of many to come? I hope the first of many, and I, I hope I have a good run with the first one to give me the put some wind in my sails. Yeah. Well, musically, so far, it's good. So, so far, it's it's. Musically, I'm totally happy about that, and I wanted to say as well, you know, Mossy and and Cyril, they run the power power play studios, and so we use the Studer tapes, you know, old fashioned tapes, analog, and an old Neve desk. Oh, you know, they, they've got a couple of nice big desks in there, and this huge recording room we, we set up everybody in the same room and we put all the amps in the other studio so they don't bleed into each other yeah. and we we jam through the whole thing to get the back uh, the basic tracks you know like you know a few times five to eight times per song uh, take the best take and i was singing every song with them and uh, but i was behind the the glass in the control room, you know. So this reminded me of the old days, you know, it's like when we recorded Headhunter in um, in Florida, in Orlando, and uh, we were all, like the drummer was in the big, big room, and we were all in these separate cubicles with 
behind the glass and yeah. all jamming together. It's like so different than what happens today where you have, you know, you uh, send me you send me your mp3 i send you my mp3 <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, we worked on the demos like that you know of course. But, but it didn't stop there of course of course um no oh, i see you got something coming up um well let, yeah, let's yeah. let's let's take a break right here uh, uh starache uh live and let live will be at when is it actually coming out hold on i gotta look at my notes real quick um well, here it's coming out next week on the eighth. There, you, yeah, that's what December. I see. On, yeah, and of course uh, they they can uh, go pick it up, and there we go. It's gonna it's gonna be it. It sounds great. It's a lot of fun. People are gonna love this record. Thank you. Uh, um, release date in the USA and Canada is February fifth. Well, we're gonna be we're gonna be right on the. I gotta get the the website here. If you want to order it now, you can go to Blick, B L I C K dot C H yeah. for um, Switzerland, uh, uh, forward slash Storace, S T O R A C E. So Blick dot C H forward slash Storace, and you can have that sent to you two months ahead of people in North America. Haha, <laughs> that's the way to do it. And uh, there you go. Always, always a pleasure. And uh, uh, merci. Merci bien. <laughs> it's a great sounding record, by the way. Thank you. So there you go. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, sir. I, I love it. Always a pleasure. And uh, my uh, my dog didn't bark. This this little dog who's sick today and he's sitting here. But uh, That's there great. you go. Uh, great pleasure. Yeah. And uh, have a great night. Nice talking to you, too. All the best, Mitch. All the best. Cheers. Take care. Have, have a good Christmas if I don't see you before. Absolutely. You too. And uh, <laughs> hopefully, oh, I didn't ask you this. Hold on. One last question. The uh, the uh, Crocus North American tour, is it going to happen eventually? Do you know? Well, I, d I don't know, <laughs> but uh, I, I keep saying if it's going to happen, it's going to be already 2023, uh, you know. Wow. Welcome yeah. to uh, welcome to the new uh, the new uh, the new reality, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh well. What can well, we do? Stay healthy, stay alive, and, hope and we to will see catch you on the road. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Merci. Take care. Bonsoir. Cheers. All the best. You too.